Welcome to JavaScript for Complete Beginners. In this video, we're going to be talking about variables, one of the most important fundamental building blocks of programming. In my opinion, the best way to learn about variables is to first visualize a variable as an abstract object, such as an empty box or a bucket. So for this example, let's go ahead and declare a variable denoted as x. So now that I have my variable x, I can go ahead and assign it an integer 5. There are other primitives such as booleans, strings, and whatnot that you'll see here, but just note that a variable can only hold a value to one thing at a time. So for instance, the string bob, or the number 2 or 5. Variables can also hold a reference to an object, and they can hold references to arrays. So just remember the main takeaway is that a variable can always only point to a single primitive or object or array at a time. So it's often the case that you need to point one variable to the value or the reference of another variable. So let's first declare our variable x and set it equal to the value of 2. Second, we're going to declare a variable named y and set it equal to x. So when we set it to x, what really happens is that the value of x is put into the state of y. So since x was equal to 2, 2 is in place into the value of y. So then later on, if in the code we decide to overwrite the value of x to 1, y is never affected. This is called passing by a value in which most of JavaScript does, except for objects and arrays, which we'll see in a second, is by reference. So next we're going to go ahead and declare an object, which is denoted by curly braces in JavaScript, and we're going to give it the property name equal to Bob. So unlike the primitives earlier, when you assign a variable equal to it, an object, it's going to be a reference that's stored inside of the empty box. So one more time, just to reiterate, x's empty box holds a reference to the object with the property bob. It doesn't actually hold the value of that object, but instead a reference. And we'll demonstrate that further with using two different variables. So right now, let's declare another variable called y and set it equal to x. So what really happens when we set it equal to x is that it's going to point y to the same object that x is pointing to. Notice how they both have arrows, meaning they both have a reference to the same object. So to kind of demonstrate what I mean by they're both pointing to the same object, we can go ahead and overwrite the name property on either of these. And in this case, we'll just overwrite y.name equal to Cody. And what this does, it's going to update the name property on that shared object to Cody so that both when you do x.name or y.name they're both going to be equal to the same value. So that's what we mean by reference. Both variables point to the same object which means when you edit the object on either of those variables you're updating the same object. So this same point by reference happens with something called arrays as well as objects. So I'm going to declare an array with the values 1, 2, 3 in it and go ahead and set x equal to that array. So again, just as a reminder, when setting a variable to an array, it's going to be by reference and not by value. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and declare another variable called y and set it equal to x. And like we saw in the last example, what this actually does behind the scenes is it's going to point y to the same array reference. So both x and y now point to the same array. So to demonstrate this, we're going to go ahead and set the first index, which is index 0, of this array equal to some other value. What this does is it's going to overwrite the 1 in our array to a 3. And now both x and y are now pointing to the same array. So index 0 of x is 3, and index 0 of y is also 3. So now that we've learned about variables, let's go ahead and open up an editor and start messing with it in actual JavaScript. 
Okay, so right here I have my Atom editor opened up and pointed to a directory called variables, which is on my desktop. And as you can see, it's a blank folder. So let's go ahead and make a new file called index.js, which we can use to demonstrate how to declare variables and how to use variables. Down here at the bottom of my Atom editor, I also have a console or terminal, which I can use to run my program. So let's get started, right? So the first thing we covered was declaring a variable named x in our whiteboard solution. So I can start by typing var, which is a keyword for declaring variables, followed by the name of the variable, followed by equals, followed by the value. <clears throat> so we see here we have a simple program which just declares a variable called x and assigns it the value of 5. Now I haven't really discussed what this is. This is a function which can be used to print out the value of variables. I'm not going to discuss what it is at this point in the tutorial, but just know that when you pass it something, it prints out a value. So now that we have our really simple program written, we can go here and run it using node space, the name of the file, which is index.js. And we see that down here it prints out five. All right, so again, we declared a variable, we assigned it a value, and then we printed it out. Now also to demonstrate what pass by value is, we can declare another variable called x, or sorry, called y, set it equal to x, and then we can print out x and y here. So again, save the file, run it, it prints out 5, 5. That makes sense, right? Because remember y is now pointing to or y is now a copy of the value of x because this are, these are primitive types which is copied by value. <clears throat> to further exemplify that, I can set x equal to, let's say, Bob here, save the file and print this out. Now before I run it, you can, you can just guess what y is going to be and what x is going to be. You can see that x is 5, first of all, and then y is equal to the value of x which is also 5, but then we overwrite x with Bob. So before we even run the program, this should print out Bob and 5. All right, so we see that here. Now something I didn't really discuss yet are the other primitives. So instead of, there's, we obviously discussed what numbers and strings are, but we can also set variables equal to, so strings, we have booleans, we have undefined, we have null. So these are all the different types of primitives you can use. You can also set it equal to floating point numbers or doubles. And you'll see this you know, later on in other tutorials and videos, but for the most part know that these are your primitives and then going into um, your objects, an object is declared with these curly braces and an array is declared with these square brackets. So let's go ahead and talk by declaring variables using pass by reference, right? So in the example we did earlier with the object, we have var x is equal to an empty object. Actually, in fact, it was, I think, the object with the property name equal to Bob. Now again, if we were to create this variable and then print it out, we see that it prints out the object with a property name equal to Bob. Now again with that whiteboard example, if we declare a new variable called y set equal to x and we do y.name is equal to Cody, if we were to run this we can assume that name is now equal to Cody, right? Because if you remember by reference both of these are now pointing to the same object somewhere out in memory. So if we were to point y to x and then say y.name is equal to Cody, we can assume x.name is going to equal to Cody at this point. So I'll go ahead and clear that and run that program. You see here x is now equal to name colon Cody. This little piece of information is kind of hard to wrap your mind around, especially when we get to functions and stuff later on. So make sure you really understand what's happening when we say y is equal to x. Well, x is an object. When we change anything on y, we're also changing something on x because they both point to the same object reference. Then we print it out, we see that that is the case, right? <clears throat> okay, so for our last example that we went over, 
we did our primitives, we did objects, same thing with arrays, right? And we'll discuss objects and arrays in detail later on. So let's just start off with x is equal to the array of 1, 2, 3. y is equal to x, and remember x is a reference to the array. Therefore y is now a reference to the array. So then finally if we do x0 is equal to 3 and print out x, we know that x is going to now become, or sorry, if we do y0 is equal to 3, we can assume x is going to become 3, 2, 3. So just to make sure that is the case, let's run our program and we see that it prints out 3, 2, 3. And again, if we were to print out both of these, we see that they're, oops, I forgot to save my file. They're both equal to the same thing and when you print them out, it's just printing out the array uh, reference here. So 323 three for x and 323 three for y. So again, to recap, we discussed how to declare variables, like a spell. Setting variables are like overriding the value of an existing variable. Um, we talked about by value and we talked about by reference. And just to note, the by reference one is very important to learn and make sure you understand for further tutorials down the line. Cool, so let's go ahead and move on to our next video.